On this planet, we have a saying. A cat can have kittens in the oven, but that don't make them biscuits. Welcome to the video review, Lock Showdown Down. Where have you been? And what happened to your head? So the real question is, what has the Fellas Dragon been up to in the two years since his last review? Is that really how it's pronounced? Let's see, I got engaged. Turtle <laughs> finally got spayed. My back <laughs> Which is why I'm using this terrible camera right now. And then I got extremely disengaged. And somewhere in there I lost about 30 pounds and a foot and a half of hair. <laughs> it's hot in here. But enough. Fuck. But enough about me. Today we're here to talk about lockdown. We will be looking at the various versions of the beloved bounty hunter from the verse, and remembering why we love the rich history of this remarkable young addition to TF lore. By chance, Lockdown's had a new version come out to coincide with each movie. The guys come a long way, and while that may or may not be a good thing, I have four versions here for the age of each of the four movies, and to kick it off, here's Animated Lockdown. We really have to address exactly how popular this character has gotten. Even Michael Bay couldn't resist pulling out elements of Animated for this guy. So sorry I can't find the engine block for this review, but I promise it did stuff and was silver, and prevented any potential driver from seeing the road in front of him. Hmm. No doors. This is where you gotta love the cartoons over the movie-verse. Where the movies usually pick licensed vehicles from the highest bidder, where you end up with vehicle modes like Q or Jolt, who's basically an updated version of the car I drive to work every day. Cartoons allow for rambunctious designs that tap into that evil, twisted little kid inside of all of us. Now, I don't have a lot of experience with animated. I think I might have seen the episode that Lockdown was in. Maybe? My only real investments with animated were the leader class Megatron, which I sold last year. And Ultra Magnus, who I haven't sold yet, but I'm still pretty ticked off he came with two sets of left fingers. Still, APC FD dubs. I also have Oil Slick because he's like Lockdown's baby brother. And Blur because Trans Tech Cheetor. Tron, Cycle. <laughs> but my history with the show is all but non-existent. However, this figure, despite its missing engine, is really quite spectacular. In lieu of a Batmobile Transformer, this is probably about the best I'm gonna get. This was almost our reality. Looking back, it's hard to believe how much bigger the old deluxes are than the new ones. As new age deluxes slowly dwindle into what appears to be the old scout class size, while quickly approaching the former Voyager price point, it's nice to go back to these old deluxes and just remember how good we had it. Makes you remember the good old days for Dinobot rubber and snap-on tires. For some reason, Hasbro's obsessed with putting Decepticon tampos on lockdown, even though I don't think he's ever been one. I guess it's not that big of a deal, but why? This car could really use a nice coat of gloss, but I understand that he fits better into the animated aesthetic without it, which is one of the reasons I really didn't like it. While the animated figures kind of suffer on the end of quality, this doesn't feel too bad in the play school plastic. It's very solid and heartily constructed. Thanks in part to these huge tires, despite being very low to the ground, the murder mobile actually rolls very well. And with those huge tires, he's decent enough to come with optional mud flaps. Considering this is an animated figure and I don't really have a lot of love for the line, this thing pulls off this mode incredibly well. And to top it all off, it has one of the best transformations of any car former in history. By having the robot mode essentially fold in half, the legs and the torso are effectively the length of the entire car. He even gains a little height by folding up the head and pulling the legs down. And there you have the first rendition of the bodacious bounty hunter in his robot mode. While this is an incredible robot mode, it's not without its problems. Now I'm not a huge fan of how the grill folds into the thigh here. It seems to scrape off some of the silver paint every time you do it. Pieces of him like to pop off a lot. When transforming, the whole thing falls apart. Not just the legs and the chest piece, but also these little flaps that doubled as mud flaps in the previous mode. Making the play school plastic problem a little bit more evident in this mode, topped off by the fact that the cartoon design really starts to show here. Now that really isn't a big deal for most people, but since I wasn't into animated, this doesn't really jive with anything else in my collection. But you gotta respect the height on this thing, even with the dumb derp hands. Posability with this guy's kind of a mixed bag. He's got great hip movement, but the knees don't bend very far. The feet aren't really posable, but there is a little bit of up-down toe movement for the transformation joint. And you also get waist rotation. The shoulder joints will go everywhere, but they're kind of on these weird hinge flat things, which give him better posability, but also look kind of weird. Like maybe he's tearing out some tendons as he reaches for the top box of cereal. The elbows are great though, they're double jointed for the transformation, so you can get them to go just about anywhere. And then the head's only on a swivel joint. This guy's got a pretty respectable use of car in this mode. Like I mentioned, the grill of the car gets turned into his thighs in this mode. I like how the back of the car becomes his feet. There's no hood chest, but he's kind of got a reverse wheel jack thing with the top of the car on his back. Speaking of the hood of the vehicle, you can store it in two places on this mode. 
You can stick it back in the vehicle mode port on his butt and give him kind of a Darth Vader butt cape sort of thing. And you can also store the engine block there if you have it. Or, as I'm sure all you fans are... Oh, I broke it. You can give him his legendary lockdown hook. Which apparently is iconic enough to have made it into the Michael Bayverse. What does it say about this guy's douchebagginess that even Michael Bay has to respect it? Although it's pretty menacing, I gotta admit the mount that it's on kinda pulls it away from me. It's a little too big, and why is there this inexplicable yellow on it? There's no other yellow on the figure. I get that Lockdown's the collector character of the show, but everything he's stolen he seems to at least have integrated into his color scheme, so why this yellow? It's a pretty solid robot mode, and while it doesn't really fit in with the aesthetic of my other figures because I'm not a big animated fan, I do have to respect where it comes from and what it's done for Transformers lore. And the fact that he went from cartoon to movieverse in just a few short years is just a testament to how awesome this character is. Animated Lockdown's pretty awesome, but... <laughs> So as we're looking at this galvanized version of the animated character, you have to note that the spikes have gone a little off the rails. Most of the grill is just an amalgam of pointy parts, and cripes, look at the rest of it. Even the tailpipes look like you could get impaled on them. There's no side of this car that couldn't kill you. Speaking of exhaust pipes, he has some on the back and on the side. Is that a thing? He still maintains the spoiler and the grill and the spikes and the exposed engine block and the sweet red windows from the animated version. But this car just seems so much more focused. And while the color scheme has deviated a bit from the original, you gotta admit that this is a pretty perfect movie version rendition of Lockdown. To get something this close to the source material in the movie-verse outside of Optimus and Bumblebee is absolutely unheard of. And I'm not even entirely certain how the designers sold this to Hasbro. The detail on this thing is insane. The paint apps are amazing. The plastic quality is perfect, way better than the Play School stuff from the animated version. It takes the whole Murdermobile idea to the streets and absolutely kills it. You gotta love Lock Douche in this mode. This is the kind of Batmobile Bruce Wayne would have if he worked in middle management. And as an unintentional treat, his tires do the hover thing from the Back to the Few Future. His tires do the hover thing from the Back to the Few Future. I said it again. And as an ad. And as an un. As an un. <laughs> but not the front ones. The irony is, I got this figure at the exact same time I got the Ice Cream Twinge, which is the most beautiful dichotomy of Transformers purchases I've ever made. But to negate that, I still forced the crap out of the Ice Cream Truck. Yeah, I know it's dumb, but, you know, I like it. Just about everything I like is crap anyway, so. In what other fictions are you going to find a transforming ice cream murder mobile? <laughs> anyway, back to lockdown. This vehicle mode does, in my opinion, what every movie version of the Transformers should do for the original Transformers, which is take the core idea and blow it into absolute awesome nonsense. This is a perfect, beautiful, real-world adaptation of a character that everybody loved and was awesome, and it doesn't betray it in the slightest. This is so faithful to the original character while standing on its own two feet. You can't deny that this would be something both appreciated by the fandom and layman audiences. This, this is what Michael Bay should do with every single Transformer he puts in the movies. He's starting to do that with characters like Hound, even though he's admittedly just bulkhead, but the idea is there. He's, he's getting there and, and bowing out just as he gets it. That's... That, way, that is how it would work, isn't it? Decepticon symbol. Why? Topping it off with a spoiler and a wicked body kit, this thing kind of feels like an evil version of Generations Wheeljack. Like the animated version, he's able to swap weapons with the deluxe ratchet from the same line. Although a bit of a huge oversight, when you try and put the weapon on, the back of the gun and the top of the cab prevent it from being able to plug in. Lame. Uh... Uh... Holy crap, have you seen this thing? Of course you have, it's not 2009. So let's see, body kit toes, hood legs, roof chest, steel's inventions. Are we sure this isn't just an evil wheeljack? Just as the vehicle mode did, this becomes a perfect rendition of a pre-existing character in movie terms. Sure, the engine block doesn't transform out the two blasters that the animated version have, but look at the claw, look at the legs, look at the height. Look at the evil stare! Everything about this screams animated lockdown with two heaping scoops of death. And as the most likely unintended bit of foresight on the creator's part, he features some serious bumper butt. And I'm glad that this figure got made before the size classes started dwindling because this thing in any other size would just pale in comparison to what it is right now. 
ROTF Lockdown lives up to the standard set by his predecessor and absolutely takes it up to the next level. There's no Transformers collector that can't use this figure in its collection. Even if you're solely a Beast Wars collector, this thing is an absolute masterpiece of a deluxe and is a huge testament to the engineering that went into these things several years ago. This is the peak of Transformers deluxes, and any collector owes it to themselves to get their hands on it. You'd think maybe with all the engineering that goes into this thing, all the awesomeness to design the paint apps, that maybe the posability would suffer. But no, it's more insane because of its engineering than anything. The legs are absolutely insane. He can bend over. He's got like a million joints in his neck. Even the bumper butt is posable. Well-executed asymmetry for the win. You hear that, Transmetal 2s? Good asymmetry. Good. The only complaint I have about this figure is that this isn't the version that appeared in Age of Extinction. This guy can actually swap weapons with the deluxe ratchet from the same line. It ends up looking pretty good even though you can't use it in the vehicle mode. I also glued on two Technic circle pins so I could attach a bayonet or other forms of weapons. But unfortunately, I'm missing the missile. What's up with me and missing part of Lockdown's weaponry? Being that it obviously cannot get any better for Lockdown, I find myself quite surprised at how pleased I am with the next version of the character. And now for a look into the short-lived run of bot shots with the appropriately acronymed BS Lockdown. As the closest thing of a datum release of this figure, this comes off less as a murder mobile and more of a bombastic bumper car. It's still a pretty good rendition of the Lockdown vehicle mode, and appears to be an amalgam of the animated and Revenge of the Fallen versions of the vehicle. It also sort of unintentionally cashes in on the folding and half design that Lockdown is known for up until this point. It doesn't give him any extra hype because he's just a stock bot shot figure, but it's still kind of cool that he's living up to his older brothers. Again, the robot mode's more of an amalgam of the previous two versions than an individual version unto itself, and even though this figure shouldn't be taken seriously, I really like what they've done here. Sure, he doesn't have the hook, but the face somehow cashes in on the sternness of the Revenge of the Fallen version while still having the intense chin from the animated version. Bot Shots was sort of a pointless endeavor by Hasbro, but I did end up getting Megatron, Shockwave, and Lockdown, and I can't say that I hate them. On the whole, this is an adorable little thing, and even though the game that it came with was kinda crap, this guy's worth having, and I'm kinda glad they put the line out because, I mean, adorable Transformers. Who's not into it? As for the last version of this guy before he went all Bayverse, I'm sad to say that this is the end of the good lockdown throwback figures. Oh, what is this? In terms of representing an on-screen character and looking like a cool robot, this is the Transformers version of the Seinfeld series finale. So help me with this if you can. I'm trying to understand Lockdown's character from Age of Extinction. His original incarnation kind of paints him as the cool bounty hunter type. And Age of Extinction appears to be playing off of that a little bit, but then they try and play him off as the whole, oh, I'm an agent of my creators kind of character. And I'm trying to figure out how that jives with the bounty hunter thing. So are you getting paid to pick up Optimus Prime, or is it an order from the people who made you? Make up your mind. You don't get to be Boba Fett and Darth Vader. Despite the fact that Lockdown and I seem to share the same motto towards most things in life, I don't care. I still can't find myself getting behind his character. He was boring and bland, and considering the fact that him and Galvatron completely conflicted his characters and should have been at each other's throats the entire time, I just, I'm not sold. Kind of feel like the real showdown should have been LD versus Galv. But I'm not the bazillion dollar director, so... Now since this isn't a review of Lockdown's character in Age of Extinction, let's go over what the figure does right. Or, more accurately, wrong to portray the on-screen character. Obviously there's the whole size issue. All the deluxes are getting smaller. We know that. It sucks. They're getting more expensive. There's nothing you can do about it. Hasbro's gonna screw us over on that one. Sorry. We're not gonna get Lockdown's immense height and how that compares against the Optimus Prime Leader class figures. But as far as accuracy, this figure kind of falls short in that department as well. Where's the V-shaped upper body character we saw on screen that had the really nasty case of bumper butt? This is not him. Although to their credit, at least they got the tire bicep thing going on for him. Even if we're not talking about the fact that this is a really poor rendition of the character on screen, this is just a terrible figure in general. This suffers from all of the worst Transformer flaws. Shell forming, flap hands, there's almost nothing to his torso. Barely any of the vehicle actually goes into making this guy's body. And on top of that, it doesn't even hold together very well. Right out of the box, the leg joint came disassembled from the body. And I've had it pop off several times since then. It's not a very tight connection. I was trying to transform it with these sides over the top of the torso, and I almost broke the thing in half. And that brings up another point that... Right out of the box, I almost broke this thing in half. About the only good thing this guy has going for him, in terms of both just being a figure and a representation of the character on screen, is his head sculpt. 
He actually looks quite a bit like Lockdown from the movie. And even though the colors aren't perfect and the collar around it doesn't match him on screen at all, it does look pretty good for the character. And speaking of his head, if you're thinking Headmaster, no. It's Head Blaster. Admittedly, it's probably the only really cool thing about this mode, but my problem with it is the fact that the main villain of the movie is the one that does this. This feels more like something that a drone would do. Like, imagine an army of these guys marching against the Autobots with heads for cannons. Cannons for heads. That is threatening. But for the main villain's head to turn into a cannon, that almost makes him kind of seem like an idiot. Which, Lockdown wasn't the brightest villain they've had in the movies. Actually, he might be. Do I have anything funny to say about this? No. I have a nifty little army of sweet Decepticon car dudes I'm building up, and alongside the Revenge of the Fallen lockdown, this guy kind of fits in well, even though he kind of feels like the George Costanza of the group. And I know I've made that reference to a Transformer before, but this thing is definitely the Penguin. I like to take Dark of the Moon laser beaks weapons, and this is my long range guy. Kind of a miniature Ironhide for the Decepticon crew. I suppose it's something that he can handhold the thing, and I guess it kind of gives him the whole sniper character look, but that dip in the center where his head goes kind of ruins the illusion. I think it's badass. I like it. Oh yeah, and I think long gone are the days of spring-loaded deluxe weaponry. I mean, he doesn't exactly live up to the legendary meat hook murder machine, but at least he's got a big silver face. If you're looking for a good lockdown from the movie, move on. If you're looking for just another Decepticon car bad guy, then maybe this will do it for you, but you gotta recognize that it's not a great figure going into it. In fact, aside from the whole head blaster thing, I'm not even sure why anyone would want to buy this. It's not a good figure. It's not well put together. It's not got interesting construction. It's not got a good transformation. I'm not even sure why I bought it. I spent money on this? What was I thinking? Why would you... <laughs> That's why you buy it. Because Lamborghini. I mean, that's why I bought it. Again, Decepticon symbol. Unneeded. Snap-on tires? Come on, guys. This figure sucks bad enough. Could you at least give him the normal pin ones? What are those called? I don't know. Rumor has it on TF Wiki that Lockdown was actually supposed to be a badass muscle car from pre-production, and somehow this happened instead. No... This is not how to be a movie transformer of a pre-existing character. This car mode just seems to reinforce what I felt about the robot mode. Turns into a black, nondescript, sleek, sexy car. It's completely devoid of personality, which actually kind of matches Lockdown, at least the movie version. It feels more like a Viacon. Kind of wish I'd bought two of them now. No. No. <laughs> Unlike Drift, you don't get any cool weapon storage in this vehicle mode. You can just kind of stick it on top. Woo. But you don't get anywhere to hide it in this mode, which is a serious lockdowner? Oh. But regardless of what you do with it, this attack mode is worse than Anthony Hopkins' Odin. Hey. Sorry. I suppose you can kind of work a makeshift stealth mode out of that. I like the stealth force idea from Dark of the Moon. I kind of wish it had gone further, and this is not a great interpretation of that, but there you go. This is basically what we should have gotten out of Dino if Dino hadn't sucked. Seriously, screw Dino. You're not Mirage and you never will be. This is why you buy Age of Extinction Lockdown, which is really upsetting because this is what Transformers is becoming. I bought three vehicle formers from Age of Extinction and two of them were for their vehicle mode only. The only Dalek's vehicle former I really thought was worth it was Drift. He ends up pulling off a decent robot mode despite the oversimplified design and while I understand that they're trying to get back in the direction of children buying toys, which is completely respectable, there still comes a time where you have to recognize when toys are good and toys are not good. And I kind of feel like Transformers is sort of moving in the direction of their toys not being good anymore. At least the deluxe vehicles. I love the Evasion Mode Optimus Prime and all of the Dinobots just are really awesome despite their crappy rubber pieces, which probably won't last very long. I just think it's really sad that the designs are starting to suffer, not because of simplicity, but because it just doesn't seem like they're putting any love into them anymore. Now, despite his flaws and his not lockdownness, I actually really like this car, but I do have some serious problems with it. Dark of the Moon was when we noticed that the vehicle size were starting to suffer and that the engineering was going down the toilet, but it still wasn't bad. On top of the fact that they came with the mech tech weapons, which admittedly weren't that great, we got that amount of plastic regardless. Come on, Hasbro, you could do better than this. Which is a shame, because I really like this car. The plastic it's molded in looks amazing. It's got this metallic, swirly effect to it, which may or may not be on a Lamborghini. I've never seen one in real person. 
real person. But it does look really good. I don't understand some of the design choices and I had to trim one of the pegs here in order for the card door to fit in perfectly. If I hadn't done that, the door would be sticking out just a little bit and kind of mess with the aerodynamicism of the car, which being that this is a Lamborghini, the sleekness of it is kind of the point. I do really like this figure. I just can't overlook the fact that they are getting so incredibly small and you cannot blame it on this gun. No cow catcher, no spikes, no green, blue windows, and no engine block? This cannot be locked down. I know he's not an Autobot, but he sure is acting like one, so I like to call this guy Downshift. Although he'd also work as the Decepticon breakdown with the whole vehicle-mounted gun thing, I have a real issue with a guy who turns into a car being named after dead on the side of the road. As another throw- Wow. Where'd they go? And I guess that's the end of the review of Age of Extinction Lockdown because I've just dropped it and have no idea where it went. For me, this has been a pretty awesome review, and I'm glad I decided to redo it. I really enjoyed covering everything from animated awesomeness to movie perfection, half-assed game-inspired adorableness, and even personally repurposed New Age failures, with the obvious champion of the group being Revenge of the Fallen Lockdown. But, of course, it was always going to be him, wasn't it? I bought all these figures because I was a fan of the character. Shockdown has always appealed to me, being that he appears to be one of those characters that seems to enjoy the evil things that he does, and when it comes down to it, isn't that what really makes a good villain? And it's just a shame that they didn't convey that characteristic in Age of Extinction. But, nonetheless, that doesn't detract anything from this figure, and I can wholeheartedly recommend everything here in one way or another. This has been the video review, Lockdown Showdown, and thank you for watching. And if you stay tuned after the video review, you get to see about 1,500 sh- <laughs> The back of the gun and the top of the- As an added treat, his tires do the hover thing from the Back to the Future 2 DeLorean.